Hey everyone, Aaron here, uh, coming at you with a new custom knife and watch video. Um, I apologize for how long it's been since I uploaded last. I've had a lot of stuff come up, and to be really honest, I've wanted to make this video for a while, but I keep like having things like incoming, or I just sold something and I'm waiting to buy something else, and I finally just decided that... Um, I just needed to make a collection update video. It's always going to be changing, so I might as well just get one done, and then I can update it as I go further. Even now, I have a custom knife order um, with Jared Price in the works, so that won't be shown here. But this will be a little bit of a longer video. I'm going to go through all of my knives, and then I'm going to go through all of my watches. And I can tell you that both collections have grown quite a bit. So, um, so yeah, anyway, let's just get started. Um, Let's go with knives first, and I'll start with one of my oldest. This is my Tom Krein Alpha. Now, for those of you that know me, I'm left-handed, so all of my customs are going to be lefty. Um, and I'm not going to really talk too much about... I'm not going to try and like review each of these. I'll just kind of tell you what they are, what they're made of, and move on. But this is the left-handed Tom Krein Alpha liner lock with blue liners. Um, titanium bolsters, marbled carbon fiber and a Stellite 6K blade. Um, I've had this for a long time, and it's, it's easily one of my favorites. And then, let's see, probably next oldest in my collection is this. This is a Tom Ferry, uh, or a Tango Foxtrot Knives. This is his Insidious model. And one of the things that's really cool about this is this is one of two part of a matching set. Um, my buddy Brian Dunn has the other one, and his is right-handed. But you can see... Um, Fairy's engraved basket weave pattern, and these scales are his self-authored Damascus steel. So this is a heavy knife, but um, the detail work on it is pretty incredible. And I'll show you, uh, and it's um, Zephanite steel, but one of my favorite details, let's see if I can get the light on it, is his Master Smith, it's tough to see, Oh, come on. Yeah, there it is. You can see Tom Ferry MS, Master Smith. I think that's pretty neat. So, um, again, Tom Ferry, Tango Foxtrot Knives. That's his Insidious model. Um, next, let's go here. This is not a custom, but it is a Chris Reeve Sabenza 21 Large in Singo. And um, kind of the cool story with this is I found one of these that ha the manufacture date was my birthday. So this was, um, my birthday is December 18. This was manufactured on December 18. So I actually sent this off to be engraved by Tom Ferry, who put my initials on the scale there. And uh, just kind of a cool piece. I know that people look for their birthdays on Sabenzas or someone significant to them's birthday on a Sabenza. So this is kind of cool. I love having a Chris Reeve in the collection. So um, there's that. Um... Let's go here. This is my Moorish made Daedalus. Um, wait, no, I'm sorry. This is a courier. I, I get I get Sam's um, models mixed up. But uh, Sam Moorish made this. Um, he's a buddy of mine. He's local to Nashville. 3V blade, titanium scales, frame lock. And you can just see the, the milling and the detail work. I love these chamfers along the sides. And a good milled pocket clip there. Sam's doing really good work. He's on Instagram. He's got some knives available, I think, so you should check him out. He just did a few that have this kind of like, um, uh, like completely like like milled through kind of crosshatch honeycomb pattern in the handle that that I really really like. Um, great maker, someone to keep an eye on. Uh, next, let's look here. So this is a Calavera Cutlery or Jeremy Robertson El Patron. Um, I've had one of these before. This I thought when I bought it that this was actually my original lefty because um, I, I got the the Tanto style blade with the um, just the mill decorated handles and all of that stuff. But I think this I don't think this was my original knife. But I am a big fan of these knives. I think that uh, Jeremy Robertson, the the maker behind them, was doing some really good work on these. Um, big, great flippers. Good PD1 tool steel, really, really mean looking blade profile with the, a nice American style Tanto there. Good machine texture, complete flow through design. 
and a simple spring clip that works really well. So again, um, Calavera Cutlery or, or Jeremy Robertson El Patron. I don't know if he's making knives anymore. I haven't seen much come from him recently. Um, next is my John Graham GL Tanto. Um, Multi-ground Tanto blade on there. You can see the uh, Timascus details on either side. That one acts as a lock bar over travel stop. And then there's a Timascus backspacer or temple tickler, as he says there. Um, John is a friend. He makes an incredible knife. He's, you know, the, the creator and, 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 and designer of the razel blade. This is not a razel, but that's where, that's where they come from. And this also has just really nice marbled carbon fiber handles with uh, just a, a, a nice tie frame lock. So, um, and I think this is CTS, um, oh, it's, a. Uh, BP1 or something like that. It's 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 Carpenter's version of um, 20 CV, if I remember correctly. Um, okay, so next we'll do this. Pohan Lu Hamachi with um, Timascus clip and anode tie hardware and a really nice Timascus backspacer there. Um, I like Poe's work a lot. I've always loved his zero ground Scandi blades, and uh, this one was a great a great example. I was offered this at a price that I couldn't really pass up, so let me zoom in a little bit for you there. Um, really, really nice, and you can just see like that nice swedge and those satin grind lines there. He does very good work. Okay, coming back out. So, oops, almost dropped it on the other knives. Um, so, Pohan Lu Hamachi. And I think these come in several different sizes. This is like the kind of the medium, like three and a half inch bladed version. Next, the Dustin Snyder um, Delta One. And you can see this has the Zerk pivot inlay, Zerk pocket clip, and then that standoff, even though you can barely tell that standoff is also Zerk. Um, and then this is his Persian blade. So uh, the, the um, Delta Ones came in this really kind of aggressive Tanto. I opted for this Persian. And uh, what's really cool is this is the first and only knife so far that Dustin has made in Stellite 6K. So really nice thick 6K blade uh, and just plain tie handles. Really smooth, really, really nice. Dustin's doing good work. Um, so that, again, that's uh, uh, Dustin Snyder's uh, Delta One. So we'll put that up there. Um, this guy is a, uh, Jason Guthrie scout. I've had a few of these and I really, really like his work. Um, he's a left-handed maker from South Africa. He does these full flat ground M390 blades with a hand rub on it and just simple, nice frame locks, uh, carbon fiber show sides. And, uh, I bought this out of Jason's pocket at blade show. He is left-handed and um, I was fortunate enough to, to be able to talk him out of this one. So great, great knife. Um, and that kind of brings me, that segues nicely right into this, which is another knife from Jason. This is his Rover model, um, which is much smaller, but you can see the marble carbon fiber scale there um, on both sides. And it's a single liner lock. So there's only one liner on the locking side. Um, and then this is a, a, a single version of this blade, the kind of the harpoon worn cliff. Um, just a really nice knife maker, and he, he makes it such a quality piece. I'm, I'm really happy to have both of these. Um, and then lastly, oh no, not lastly, but second to last, a fixed blade. This is Do um, uh, Patrick Doyle. I can't remember the model on this. This isn't the Land Pirate. This might be the Woodland, Woodward, something like that. But it's 3V with... Um, uh, burlap, uh, lightning strike burlap or thunderstorm Kevlar. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, scales here. You can see it's starting to develop some patina. I've had this knife for a long time and it's, I've used it quite a bit. So really nice knife. Pat makes a great blade. Um, and I could not be happier with that. And then lastly on the knives coming out of my pocket, a righty. This is Jim Burke, Jim Burke's, uh, Rambit. This is the prototype. So this, I also have a big zirconium ring that replaces the um, standoffs in the backspacer, but it's this really mean Sanmai armor core blade and these blue anodized and milled titanium handles. Um, 
pretty cool. I don't normally buy right-handed knives, but this one was just too neat. I couldn't pass it up. Nice spring clip, flippable clip, so it's an ambi carry. Um, I think largely because with the with the ring, you would carry it um, tip up, but in reverse, so you could just yank it out that way. So, um, really cool knife. I think the only knife I should I've got them all in front of me. I can look. The only knife that I that I have in any kind of Damascus right now. So. And like I said, I, I currently have a knife with um, Dustin Snyder that's in production. Oh, not Dustin Snyder. I'm just looking at my Snyder. With uh, Jared Price that's in production. And um, that will be added to this in the next like week or two. So, um, moving on to watches. I have a collection. Um, I, I, I've been reviewing watches and kind of talking about watches for a little while now. And I've built up a, a respectable collection of some pretty cool watches that um, I'm really happy with. And uh, it's been starting to settle down. I moved through watches pretty quickly for a while, so um, I'm going to say that and then sell everything tomorrow, but I figure I'll go through and show you anyway. This is the new Omega Seamaster with the, the new wave dial, ceramic bezel, master chronometer on the bracelet. You can see on the back here, you've just got this great um, exhibition back. Big fan of this. I was excited about this when they announced its release at, at Basel World. And uh, that excitement um, continued on. So just a really nice piece. I love the, the slightly upsized case. I just think it looks great on the wrist. So can't recommend it more if you're in the market. Um, moving on from that one, I have this watch. Um, I've owned this watch uh, twice. I bought it new off of Amazon. I sold it. And then I bought it back. Um, it's a Seiko Turtle. It's the simple um, SRP 777. It's not running right now because I haven't been wearing it. But um, I bought this watch to wear on a cross-country road trip that my wife and I went on a couple of years ago. And then I sold it when we got back. And, and, and kind of based on the memories and stuff that, that were made with it, I, I wanted it back. So uh, very simple watch. I maintain that I think some of Seiko's dive watches are, are incredible values. And it would be difficult to, to find a better watch for the money. There are certainly many options out there, but but I'm a big fan. So the SRP 777. Um, let's see. Next in the knife, or I'm sorry, the watch box, we'll look at, let's look at this one. This is the Longines Avigation Big Eye. Um, again, another watch that um, when it released, I was really excited about it. Um, this is a, a column wheel chronograph with the oversized uh, minute counter there, giving it sort of this asymmetric look, the big eye. Um, big fan of this, 41 millimeter case. This is an aftermarket um, strap from Watch Strap Haven on Instagram. Um, it's a uh, uh, shell Cordovan. Big fan. I love the vintage stylings of this and the, the big oversized pushers and everything. Really, really nice piece. Decent value, too, if you're in the market. You can pick them up for around two grand secondary um next we'll look i just got this in a few days ago casio g-shock um you really can't overlook the the history and the heritage built into the g-shock much less just the practicality and the accuracy um, this is a radio controlled so solar it's the gw5000 model with the dlc coded back um, just a, a, an homage to the classic square G, but just with a really nice upgraded module in it. Um, big fan, chopping firewood tomorrow. This is what will be on my wrist. So not much more to say there. Uh, following in this, in its footsteps though, is the Casio range man, um, triple sensor. So you've got your thermometer, barometer, and, uh, compass. Um, again, radio, solar, all those good things. Just a really nice piece. Um, bigger watch. I have it on a on a Bob and K NATO strap adapter here. It's got some paint flex and stuff on it because I wore this when we were painting our house. So um, again, cool piece and uh, also a good option if you're looking for a digital quartz watch. Um, let's go here next. This is a, an interesting one. I bought this watch in Rome when my wife and I were on vacation um, a year ago. And it's a gold, solid gold cased vintage chronograph with a, it's a Landrin movement in it. And I just really loved it. Uh, we found it in a, in a 
pretty legit vintage watch shop um, in Rome. And uh, I, I loved it, bought it, brought it home. And it's just been a really nice kind of good luck charm. I wear it on, you know, job interviews or important occasions. And it's been really, really nice. Um, gold is kind of weird for me. Red Croc is kind of weird for me. But there's just something about this that I really, really enjoy. Um, it, just really beautiful patina on the hands, clean dial, clean crystal, so on and so forth. Cool piece. Um, second to last. Another Omega. Whoop, my set's falling apart. This is the Omega uh, Coaxial Master Chronometer Rail Master. I loved this watch from the release. You can just see the, the vertical brushing on the dial, the nice polished, kind of, but they're kind of like a crispy satin polish on the hands. Um, it's a fully matte case with twisted lugs. Just a, a really, a really, really nice watch. Time only. Um, you have the numerals on the dial. Um, big, chunky, vintage, vintage styled loom markers, which you'll either, you'll either love or hate. Um, I think it's kind of neat. Some cool case details, really nice bracelet on a butterfly clasp, and you can see the Omega case back there. So, again, the Omega Railmaster on bracelet. Um, this was released, I think, a year ago uh, at Basel, so also a very cool piece. And last but not least, a watch that I'm currently reviewing, the Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot uh, Caliber 114 GMT. It is a hand-wound watch, 10-day power reserve. You can see the hand there is a GMT hand, ticking sub-seconds with the date at 9. 44-millimeter um, watch. Nice big display back. You can see the giant uh, barrel there with the mainspring. Really cool piece. Uh, again, announced at Basel this last, war this last year, and it was just uh, it was something I had to have. I mean, these things are really, really incredible. So... Um, that's it, guys. You can see I've got, I've got watches and knives everywhere. This is the collection as it stands. Um, the watches have kind of slowed down. There's nothing else really on the horizon. There's a few things that I wouldn't mind saving up for and picking up, but I, I'm not currently like hunting anything specific. And then knives, um, I just traded out of most of my productions going buying this. But um, everything else I've kind of had for a little while, and, and I have the, um, the Jared Price incoming. So I guess that's it. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the comments if you want to know about anything in particular or you want to know my opinion. Um, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, and I just uh, I figured an update would be, would be welcome. So thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you soon.